moment, take a moment to look ahead to the uh, Seahawks game this weekend. Seahawks play the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville. Both teams enter the game at, with an 8-4 and four record. Uh, it's the Jaguars defense that the Seahawks are going to have to be aware of. The Jaguars only allowing 307 yards per game, whereas the Seahawks are allowing 300 and about 40 yards per game. Uh, offensively, these teams are scoring about the same number of points, both in the 24 range. Uh, but defensively, again, Jacksonville is uh, allowing just 14 points per game, whereas the Seahawks are giving up 18 points per game. Both pretty solid numbers. Yeah, uh, Seth, what do you think going into Sunday's game in Jacksonville? I expect it to be a pretty low-scoring game with the two defenses that are going to be out there. Uh, of course, Blake Bortles doesn't exactly intimidate you as a quarterback. I don't think he's going to be able to do all that much against the Seattle defense. But with that great Jacksonville defense, I think it will be tough going for Seattle. This could be a game that's decided by a missed field goal or two. So Blair Walsh, Are you? <laughs> Blair Walsh better be on his A game. It is Wednesday before the game, and Seth is going right at Blair Walsh <laughs> before we get even deep into this thing. So it's going to be down to Blair Walsh, huh? It could be, yes. Just because both these defenses are so strong, are very strong. I'm not going to say so I, strong, but they're I, both very yeah, strong I, defenses. I don't know that either team is going to be finding the end zone very often on Sunday. So, I mean, that's that's a very, very pointed to go right at Blair Walsh right away. I would agree with you. I would agree that it's it should be a low-scoring affair. Uh, I think that the Seahawks are going to need to create a turnover at some point like they did in the Eagles game. I mean... You think about the game on Sunday night. Uh, Eagles are getting ready to score, and I, don't, I can't remember exactly what the score was. It might have been like seventeen to three, maybe at the was, time. I think it was seventeen to ten at seventeen the time. to ten. So that would have tied it. So you can think of how different the dynamics would have been uh, had 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 Philadelphia gone in and scored right there. But like, I think that a turnover is going to be necessary. A turnover or two are going to be necessary. And like you said with Blake Bortles, uh, the Jaguars are only only averaging. Uh, 215 yards through the air. Hmm. Not a very big number, but on the ground, they're averaging 149 yards per game. Yeah, they, they do have Leonard Fournette at uh, running back. He's a rookie, but a very talented running back. He's looked good all season long, really, and he's been, he's been their workhorse. Talk about matchups. A lot of the times when people talk about a matchup, it's like quarterback versus quarterback, which is absurd because they never play each other at the same time. Right. They're all, they're both watching each other like, like ooh, uh, Russell Wilson versus Carson Wentz. Well, it's not even that a little bit. I don't know why people say that. <laughs> this weekend, the matchup might be Leonard Fournette, the running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars, versus Bobby Wagner. Who are you going to pick in that matchup? Who's who's the better player? Who 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 would you lean lean with? I'd go with Bobby Wagner. I mean, he hasn't missed a tackle the entire season, they said, on the Sunday night game. Wow. How did, Which... <laughs> Which that's impressive. That means when he has when he has a, a running back or whoever has the ball in his sights, he makes the tackle every single time. Never misses. I mean, how can you go with Leonard Fournette in that matchup? Again, Jaguars averaging 149 rushing yards per game, uh, but the Seahawks are only allowing 98 rushing yards per game. So this is a defense. Like this is a matchup. That, what one team does well, the other team is able to stop. Yeah. And so, man, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's a toss-up. Like we said, both teams are 8-4. and four. Um, The Seahawks are 4-2 and two on the road. The Jacksonville Jaguars are 4-2 and two at home. I mean, it doesn't get much closer than this. I mean, what? I was a little concerned with the, the game originally being slated for 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. 10 a.m. East. Yeah. 10 a.m. Uh, local. Yeah, 10 a.m. local yeah. time. But uh, they flexed that game to 125 local time. And the Seahawks usually come out pretty flat in 10 a.m. games, but they haven't had to play a single one of those games this year. And this was the only one that they were going to have to play, and now it's three hours later. So I don't know how much of a difference that will make, but I think that's definitely a positive for Seattle. Earlier you mentioned how important you think the field goals are going to be in in this matchup. Uh we talked about the Eagle game and how uh, it was almost uncharacteristic for this team to come out and start so quickly and score 10 points in that first quarter and really get up on their opponent. 
what will be more detrimental if, if there is a missed field goal or if there's a slow start what would be worse for this team <sighs> it obviously depends on where like if there's a missed yeah. field goal in the third it, it in the fourth quarter when. Like, oh yeah that 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 could be it but also if you get down against this defense 10 points in the first quarter that's a ton <laughs> i i would i would say that the slow start would be more detrimental but the Seahawks do that pretty much on a weekly basis with the exception of this last game, and they've still won eight of their games this year. So I, I think I would have to lean towards missing a field goal because that will set up Jacksonville with good field position and, of course, that's taking points that the Seahawks should have had off the board then. According to the ESPN Football Power Index, Jacksonville is a 56% like has a 56% chance of winning this football game. This is a crazy tight matchup. Yeah. Like I don't know where to go with it. I it's it should be very fun to watch on Sunday. They only play the Jaguars every 4 years right. being in opposite conferences and I believe the last time they played the Seahawks won I think it was 42 to 7, but again that was 4 years ago, completely different teams on both sides. Very different, very different. Um I don't know if you had to pick a standout star going into Sunday's game like this is the guy who's gonna have a monster game uh, who's it gonna be I think Tyler Lockett might have a really really surprise, good surprise surprise he, he hasn't done much I mean he's been he's been a contributing member but I don't remember him being a standout so far this year why are you gonna go with Tyler Lockett I don't know I just feel like he's gonna break off a couple big plays he's a he's a deep threat he's handles the kick and punt returns for Seattle I think he breaks off one or two big plays in in a defensive game I think that's going to be huge not only for momentum but also just getting in a in a position where you either get a touchdown on a big play or you get close enough to the end zone that you you're at least going to put some points up on the board and that'll be a huge difference in the final score so essentially Tyler Lockett is due to do something big is ultimately kind of what it comes down yes. to for you. I'm going to go with, and this is such an obvious, like, duh answer, <laughs> but it's going to be Russell Wilson is going to have to That's such win a the boring game. answer. I know, it's so vanilla, and I'm sorry for those of you who are listening at home, but that is what it is. Uh, broadcasters couldn't stop talking about how Russell Wilson is the reason for, like, 82% of the Seahawks offense. Yep. Every game. Not just last week, not just the week, every single game. I mean, and so how is my still, answer, how is my answer going to be any rusher. different? How is it going to be any different? Like it, it has to be Russell Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't say Wilson simply because it's I think that's easy. kind of a given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to say it because it's a given. Like Russell Wilson's going to go as this team goes, and should be a fun matchup on Sunday. You got anything else to add about this this game against Jacksonville? <sighs> I. I don't know. It's just kind of a, it's another game. It's a, a good team. And I mean, of course, I'm going to watch it as much of it as I'm able to, but I don't know. It doesn't feel as important as it did a week or two ago when the Seahawks were seven and four or six and four. It just How feels, it, it, feels, it feels like they have more breathing room now. If they lose, it doesn't mean quite as much. So we're in the final stretch, the last four games of the season. They got Jacksonville, Los Angeles, Dallas, and Arizona. Can they afford to drop one now with this win over Philadelphia coming down the stretch? I think they can. I mean, ideally you don't want to because right. then you don't really control your own destiny anymore. They've got Rams at Cowboys and then Cardinals to wrap up the season. I think to get in, they need to, they need to finish 10 and six or better. So really, that just means splitting these final four games. So I don't think it's the end of the world if they drop this game. Yeah, I definitely see them winning at least two of their last four. Um, specifically, those last two. I mean, they're going to beat Dallas. They're going to beat Arizona. Uh, the Rams are going to be tough, and Jacksonville's going to be tough this weekend. So should be an awesome matchup between the Jaguars and the Seahawks on Sunday afternoon.